In our video about blanks, I pointed out that your matrix, in other words, everything other than your sample that's present in your, well, vial, I don't want to use the word sample twice, everything that's present can actually have some sort of an impact, and we need to control for that. Now, what happens, though, when you've got a complicated enough sample that it becomes challenging to blank it and to come up with a calibration curve that's separate and make everything artificially? Now the best thing we can do is something called standard addition. Basically, we're going to take a standard and we're going to add it to our sample. Hence, standard addition. Now here's the basic idea that we're going to use. We're going to take five milliliters or however much volume of our unknown and we're going to put it in each of these flasks. Obviously the values can change. I just wanted to go through an example of it so that you see exactly what we're doing. So notice every one of these has the exact same amount. If we were to go ahead and stick them onto our spectrometer or whatever instrument we're measuring with, we'd say, yep, we've got a signal, but we haven't added any standard yet. So if I'm keeping track, I'd go ahead and I'd make a graph and I'd see I've got a point and I have added zero milliliters of spike so far. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some of my standard. And notice I'm making a calibration curve. I've got none of my standard added. I've added standard addition. 5 milliliters, 10, 15, 20. Notice how the volumes are all different right now. So right now I definitely wouldn't want to measure them because I've got this crazy dilution factor to deal with too. But we were smart and wise and we put all of this into a volumetric flask. So now we're going to dilute to the line. Now notice that since we've diluted the line, this, this value doesn't matter anymore. That was for the concentrated original sample. Things are more dilute. And for the one that doesn't have anything added to it, we're going to have this size value. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and take our measurement for each of those spikes. Notice we've got the one we didn't add anything to and the ones where we spiked up. We end up with a calibration curve built now here's the thing. Our standard was sitting in DI water probably by itself. So it's not adding anything new. Then we filled up with just DI water. So all of the other things that were present in our matrix started out at the same concentration, got diluted to the same final concentration, and we didn't add anything else except for the standard itself. Which means we have the exact same matrix in all of these cases all of those matrix effects have been canceled out by uh, this effect. So what we can do is we can extrapolate backwards and we can say, okay, cool, if it took me, I need to know how much sample I needed in there in order to get my absorbance to be this high. If it took me this many more milliliters to get the same change in absorbance, then obviously that's the amount that I just added. So as long as you ignore the negative number going backward for the negative volume, conceptually that's what you just did. You just kind of had a sample where somebody had already added this much volume. You put it on and figured out Beer's Law, used the slope to find your x-intercept. That tells you the volume that would have been added to build it in the first place. Multiply your concentration of your, uh, here let me just do it like this, your standard concentration in Molarity times your volume added. That gives you moles. Hey, look, you've got moles. You now know the number of moles of your standard that were present in your original but dilute sample. Then what you still have to do is work backward through your calculations to get back to what you had originally for your uh, original sample. In other words, you just have to undo the dilution that you did there. That's how we do a standard edition experiment.